Hello again. I'm glad we're back together. We're going to do a landscape today. This is kind of a different one. Let me show you a picture. This is called an Impressionist style. And I'll tell you more about the impressional, Impressionist art artists as we get painting. So this is going to be in tempera. And I have my colors right here. Blue, white, green, yellow, and red. And I have several brushes. I have kind of a bigger brush. That'll be for the backgrounds because, you know, when you paint, you you do it in layers. So we have a really light blue wash in the background. And then here's my middle ground, that very pale yellow wash. And this is a pale green wash. So I'm going to use my biggest brush for that. And then when I go to put on my clouds, my smaller things, I'll probably use this. This is called a filbert. It's, its edges are kind of curved. If you don't have one, that's perfectly fine. You use what you have. It's going to be great. And then down here for the um, little flowers, this is poppies. You can use a, a little round. It doesn't have to be this big. I just happen to have a big one. So this is watercolor paper. The first thing I'm going to do is tape it down. I'm going to put this right here to look at. Is that going to be all right? Okay. So there's my tape. And I'm going to rub it on my clothes first so it won't be too sticky. This is going to hold it down really nicely. Did you notice we put that butterfly up? He flew in. Looks colorful. Okay. Down on the bottom. Actually, the first thing I should do is put on my glasses. Now I have my water ready. There. I have two things of water actually because I might need to change my water. And then I have two palettes. You may use paper plates are fine. They'll work really well. That was a little short, so I'll just do this one on top. Try to get it lined up. I like this. It gives it a nice crisp edge. Looks good. So I have my pencil and my eraser because I'm going to divide it into my three sections, my background, my middle ground, and my foreground. All right, there's the tape. So, right, right here, I'm going to draw in my horizon. Remember, horizon is where the sky and the land meet. I'm sketching light until it's right. So it's about the top third, and it's going to come down a little lower. And it's curved, kind of hilly to make it interesting. Now my middle section, I'm going to make it so that it's kind of a hill right here. It's going to come down, and then it's going to go up a little more. There. So that's all I need to do with my pencil. Is this a good spot for this? Yes? OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wash. I can use tempera paint for a wash. It's not going to be the same. You see if you can notice the difference uh, from watercolors. Oh, and I have to make sure I use my palette knife and get some blue up here. About, about this much. And let's wash this off. I need it really clean because now I'm going to get some white also. I might as well get this ready. Now I get some white. I'll put it down here because I don't want it to get mixed up about that much. It's good. You just keep the lids on your temper paint and it's going to last you until the end of school. And then you can use it for whatever you want. All right, so I'm going to make my wash now, and I want to make it pretty light. 
So when you do a wash, that is going to water the color of the paint down, remember? And you can tell it's wet because the paper's shiny. It doesn't have to be perfect. If it goes over these lines, it's okay. The main thing is we are having fun and we're going to learn some things. All right, so I'm going to have water on my brush and I'm going to take some blue on my brush like this. I'm going to get enough. And I'm going to get some white. Bring it over here. Oh no. Uh, I'm going to mix that. Remember you always put your dark color into your lighter color. Remember that? Ooh, I like that. That's looking good. I'll get some more of this blue here. I want a lightish blue for my background. See the color of my background? Get some more water, some more blue. I can just make it the color I want to get it. Oh yeah, this is looking good. And more water. All right. Oh yes, this is great. Keep getting more water. It doesn't, you don't want it all the same on this part. Some places when you paint, you do. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna have to get a little more blue. I just want it to be light. Usually it's a little darker up towards the top. I'm just going to get some white from the very edge, but I'm not going to get any blue in it. Try not to. Yes, this is perfect. See, I'm painting kind of quickly and I'm taking long strokes. Get some white over here. Take it up here. I just want to get down in here. Hmm, very good. I don't mind if some of the white shows through on the paper, you know what I mean? Down here, like right in there, that's okay. Have you been looking at the clouds lately? They've been so beautiful, especially those days where it's sunny, then it gets rainy. Okay, there was that one. We did the background. Getting my brush super clean. Gave it the test. Yes, now I'm going to put a wash in the middle ground, which is going to be my yellow. I want my yellow to be very light. So I'm going to take it right here. I'm going to put it on my other palette just so I have plenty of room. I like to have lots of room. Okay. So if I'm going to give it a wash, let's clean this off. That means I'm going to dilute it with water. Oh, I forgot one thing to do first. I'm going to get my middle ground wet. Because I want real pale yellow because I'm going to put darker yellow on top of it. And this is the only color dark yellow that I have. And I don't really want any puddles. To get puddles, things get funny. All right. If I got too much water, I'll just scoot it off the side. See the two shades of yellow there? Or the two tints, actually? You get a tint when you add white. So I am using water kind of like it's paint to thin it down. Remember the value? I want to get a lighter value. This is good. I like this. Oh, it went up there, but that's okay. More water. Notice we put the butterfly up. 
it look nice, colorful. Monarch butterflies are not that big. Not really. They're probably about, they can get like that. Okay. All right, that's very good. Long, just long, smushy strokes. I'm pushing, pulling, and patting. Remember the three Ps when you're painting? All right, get my brush nice and clean. Now we're going to go for the green. Go for the green. Take the palette knife. I'm gonna put some over here on this one. This is a beautiful color green. I love this color. It's so pretty. There's so many colors of green. It's amazing. Blue green, yellow green, gray green. Reddish green, purpley green. Okay. Blah! So now I put it right in the yellow. Great. Okay, get this cleaned off a little. So now I want to do a wash. So I don't mind if it has a little yellow on it. That'll be okay. So I'm getting this wet here. Moving quickly. This is something you can do quickly because it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure your paint is wet. And if you look back a little, you can see, or make sure that your paper's wet. If you look back, you can see it's shiny where it's wet. Okay, so I'm gonna take some green over here and mix it with a bunch of water. You know what I might do. I might just sneak right over there, get a tiny tad of yellow just to make it a little lighter. There. This is gonna be a wash, remember? So we want it pretty wet. Let's try it. Oh yeah, ooh, look what it's doing. It's almost acting like watercolors. Oh yeah, I love it. Now this is like a hill right here. It's supposed to be a hill. So if it's curvy, that's great. That will help your imagination. Now let's talk about impressionist painting. When people first started painting, the artists like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, they made all their paintings looked so realistic. You couldn't see any of the strokes like when they painted skin, it just looked like skin. But then, and, and they always painted things about the church and God or a lot about wars or they would have, you know, portraits of people. Okay, now this needs to dry, but this is pretty dry so I'm going to use that. I'm, I'm just going to start putting my clouds in first. Let's check out these clouds. The first ones I'm going to do are the darker ones. Oh should I have moved it up? I'm learning how to do this. So these little dark blobs right here and I'm going to use this brush I think. So I'm going to use some of my darker Probably my darkest blue. I'm just going to try putting them in. Now when we put them in, it's just going to be little dabs and strokes. Because what you do with a picture like this, it makes an impression. And the, the artists that did the regular beautiful painting that looks so realistic, when these men started painting in a different style and using their paints differently, they did a lot with dabs and globs of paint and it would catch the light in different ways. The old painters were shocked and they couldn't stand it and they didn't want anything to do with it and they completely rejected them and made fun of them and said they were terrible. Now some of the paintings that we love the most are from Vincent van Gogh or Monet. 
Monet's beautiful water lilies. They were really famous Impressionist painters. And they would make, use little dabs and globs and you'd have to almost like sometimes the way to see it the best for me is if I squint my eyes like that. I squint and I have to use my imagination when I look at it and it gives me the an impression of a landscape where it's not exactly every detail perfect. So that's what this is. This is an impressionist little landscape. So we're going to use a lot of dots. We're not going to be smoothing and blending and smoothing and mixing. We're just going to put layers of little dabs on top. Okay. So now I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start putting on my clouds like this. I'm not going to make them in, in rows, you know, like you do in math. I'm just going to be putting them everywhere. I'm going to turn my brush different ways. The darkest ones probably are going to be up by the top. And it's going to get lighter down here at the horizon. Some of them even painted just with little dots, tiny dots. It must have taken them so long. And some of Mr. Monet's paintings, he has one of water, he did a lot of his gardens because he had these beautiful, beautiful gardens. They're real famous with the water lilies and the bridges. Um, and he did murals. Murals are painted on walls and some of his paintings would be like, 50 feet long and all little dabs and dots like this because they loved looking at the light. Eventually people begin to really enjoy them. And now, I mean, we really appreciate their paintings. Okay, do you see those little globs? Let me see. I'm going to put some down here, maybe over here, up here. All right. So... Now what I'm going to do is mix a little lighter blue. I'm going to get some white over here. And I'm going to get some blue. Let's see if I can make it a little lighter. I want it, l I want it darker than the background. Color mixing is so fun. I love color mixing. Okay, I think that's going to be good. Got a lot of paint there. Now I'm going to try to go in between. Though if I get some on top, that's okay. Yeah, maybe a little lighter. Doesn't it seem like it needs to be a little lighter? Mm -hmm. So you can see it. Oh, there. That's pretty good, huh? Little clouds. Do you ever squint your eyes when you look at things outside? When it's really bright, right? Ooh, this is like kind of a, not a stormy sky, but kind of. Pretty. I'm gonna put some down here. Might have to mix some more colors. White. I'll go over here and get a little blue right on the edge. That's pretty. I'm kind of using my brush on the side. Almost like they're little pillows, don't you think? Well, they look really nice. Just, okay, when you squint, this looks almost like a pre-stormy sky, like a spring sky. It's one thing I love about spring so much is that the sky changes so much. It'll be sunny, then it'll be really rainy, and then it'll even hail. It's really wonderful. Okay, 
So now I want to put a layer of white on there too, but I think I'm just going to see if I can let that dry and come back to it. Now I'm going to go to the yellow. I'm going to put some of my regular colored yellow right on top here. And this is just going to give it some texture. This isn't as big as the clouds. I'm going to try to make it a little smaller. I could even use a smaller brush. Could. Maybe I should. Using the side of my brush. We went for a drive and there was this, we were out in the country, there was this beautiful field and it was all green and there were sections and kind of layers of it that were this, there was this beautiful golden orange grass. It was so pretty. I even took a picture of it. I love looking at things like that. So you can see where there's dark places and light places in my color here. That's really good. It's good interest. Makes You can see why we did a wash behind it because it gives it depth. Remember, we're taking a flat piece of paper, tricking the eye with the paint while we're having all this fun. Okay. Actually, I think these little dots are a little on the big side, but I guess it's okay. All right, that's pretty easy. I'm gonna wash my brush. Check it out, clean it up really good. Okay, now I have to use the dryer. It is loud. It'll be quick. to play music during this part. Tempera takes a little longer to dry than watercolor. try this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this kind of medium brush that I had and I'm going to go back to the white. I'm going to put a layer of white. If it's wet, see it'll turn blue, but I want to try to get it so that it's just, you can see the white clouds in there. Some of, um, I want to show you some pictures when we're done because I forgot to show them before we started of Vincent van Gogh, his paintings. Some of the strokes were th so thick that you could go up and <laughs> you could touch them and feel the depth of all the paint that he put on there. Really beautiful. And you know that picture, Starry Night? Now, that doesn't look realistic at all. That's Impressionist, but everybody knows that picture and really appreciates it. Do you know he didn't even, he didn't even sell, I think he sold one painting his whole life. Nobody bought his paintings until after he died. He went to be with the Lord. Let me get some white down here. It's white. These are like pillows. Don't you think? Puffs. Maybe I'll put a few little blue ones down here. It seems like it needs a few blue. I'm just kind of touching it up a little. Okay, pretty good. Now I'm going to do some work 
I'm going to have to wait for that to dry or dry it. But I'm going to do some work on these, the green down here at the bottom. Because I want, want to get this dry up here before I put in the very far background. So, let me see, I'm going to try the same brush. I'm going to use this green. I might come over and get a tiny little slurp of blue to make it a little darker for the far away. Okay, I think I can put this in now without touching any of that white. So these are like some trees here. And look, I'm just kind of patting. Want to stay away from those white spots if possible. These are just like bushes or trees. So you use your imagination, right? And then over here, we're going to have the same thing. a bunch of trees. Can you imagine that? Like a forest right over here. I'm gonna put a little tiny slurp of blue to make my green a little darker. Oops. Okay. Looks like they're going Bye-bye. All right, now we're going to come down here in the front with my green. I'm going to make it a little lighter. Get some green. <coughs> get, <coughs> excuse me, a little chunk of yellow. I'm just trying to make a few different colors of green. I want to get the lightest one towards the front. All right, so right in here, I'm going to put some, some, these are some bushes, I think. Just dabs. And then I'm going to add a little more yellow. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put some here. I'm going to try to make it a little curve like this. It's called a venet, venet, a venet. Is Vinette, Vinette? Vinette? Vignette. That's it. Thank you. So we always need help. All right. What the vignette does is it kind of draws your eye into the focal point. We haven't got to the focal point yet, but we will. little darker towards the front. There. Now I'm using my imagination. I was thinking they almost look like cactuses, but I don't know. All right. That still is not very dry yet. We'll do the trees in the distance the very last thing. What do you think? So now I'm going to wash up and I'm going to get a different brush, this little round. This is a round because the point is kind of rounded and I'm going to use red. I'm going to make this field of poppies. I'm not going to mix it with anything. Whoops, looks like we have something in there. Something that's probably going to be plenty. Wash this off. Wipe this off. Keep it nice in case we want to touch up anything. All right. Now, notice about these poppies. You see right in the middle, like there's a lot of dots, but right in the middle, they're really close together. So when you just squint your eyes and look at it. You can see it looks more solid right in here. Then it's a little thinner on the edges. It's probably because there's more poppies right in the middle. So I'm just going to start making some dots. And even if they're looking 
kind of interesting. We'll just keep adding to it. And the ones in the middle are going to be a little closer. Work, this brush is working better for me if I hold it straight up and down. So I have to just be patient here and build up. I want some of it up in that yellow section too. And I want to bring it down over here. Like, Get a few little dots. Here's the other thing you could do too if you want to make some different dots is you can use the bottom of your paintbrush. That makes kind of skinny ones, or sometimes it makes fatter ones. You can try it. It's kind of fun. You just don't want them to be in a row because nobody planted these. These just grew. When I was little, we would I lived in Kansas, and we would take rides and go to Wyoming. And there would be fields and fields of these beautiful wildflowers. We'd stop and pick them. I have some pictures of my sister and I holding these big bouquets. I loved it. They were beautiful. Okay, there's one big glob. I'm going to put a little group over here, too. Now, this is my focal point. You can see it's going, even though it's a really busy painting, it's drawing my eye to that red. Can you see that? See how the ones in the in the center are a little closer together? So it makes a different look than the ones that are just out here by themselves. Though it's okay to have some out there. Okay, and then I'm going to put some over here. They came all the way over here, too. Beautiful colors. Blue and yellow, primary colors. Green, secondary color. Red, a primary color. Green and red are on the opposite of each other on the color wheel. So they really make each, each other just go pow and pop right out. I'll just give it a few little ones down here. So do you see how my eye kind of really goes to the red? Your eye. There's a few little ones. It's so quiet. A while ago, the rain was really going. Okay, I say that's enough. That's very bright. Very colorful, catches my eye. All right, you know what? Some of that white is so thick. I'm still, I'll move it a little, thin it out. Just over here behind these trees. That's where it's really thick, and then I'm gonna just give it a quick dry. And then we'll do the last thing. We'll put the we'll put the tall trees on. And it's a fun way to paint trees in the distance. And like I said, we're using our imagination. All right, a quick dry. Just right here in this spot.
and we'll just let the rest of it dry itself. That should do. So now I'm going to take my round, my big one that I used for the wash. I think, I think I am. I think it's gonna work. And I'm going to paint these little globs for the tree. You're gonna really use your imagination. There's one. Maybe I'll make him a little shorter. Maybe I'll make this one taller. See how I'm padding? I could even add a little tiny tad of blue if I wanted and make it a little different color green. They don't have to all be the same. I don't want them all in a row though, you know like somebody planted them because they didn't. This is just the planting of the Lord. It's outside. It's not in a garden. It's God's garden. Okay. So that was easy. All right. Now I have a black pen. This is a gel pen. This works really good on top. I'm going to be careful because this is kind of wettish there. So watch this. I'm going to just draw this. My This is my trunk. Got a little crooked. And then I'm going to just make these branches come up like that. You can come up and... See, it's just you're going to be using your imagination here. There. We're finished. Don't you like that way, though, of making trees in the distance? I mean, that's really easy and it makes them look really good. So, it's still kind of wettish. So, be careful when you take yours off. You can let yours dry, but I'm going to just take this off carefully so I can hold it up and show you. This was fun. I liked it. Whoops. Getting. Make sure you put your lids back on your paint and don't let them sit around and dry out because we're going to use them next week. Get this one. Oops. Okay. Now, even though I did two of them exactly the same, they're going to look really different. Then I can decide which one I like the best. Here we are. This is an impressionist painting of a field of poppies. See how your eye goes to those reds? That's your focal point, the thing that stands out the most and catches your eye. All right. That was fun. I liked it. Let's do our special treat now. Our special tweet. Now, I don't know if you saw this cutest little bird. This is a swallow when Mrs. Mrs. Frost was in Portugal, she brought this back because I think they have a lot of swallows over there. And one thing about them, you, you can't even see it on this, but they have very short beaks and short tails. And their tails are 
come in like that, like little swords kind of, and their wings are like that too. Okay, this isn't what a real one looks like, but let me show you. There are swallows around here. You might not have noticed them because they move around so fast, you don't usually see them sitting around that much. But these do live here. I have seen them. If you know what you're looking for, when you see them fly, look for their white tummy and their white head right here under their neck. This is called a violet green swallow. It's a beautiful thing. Look, it's green on his head, green back here. And then see that violet blue green? Notice how bright his tail is. This is probably the dad because they're much brighter. Now see, when, remember I told you he had a short little beak and a short little tail, and when he sits there at rest, his, his wings are way longer than his tail. Pretty. Now the, when you see these, you usually see them at night, right before the sun goes down, and there'll be a bunch of them, and they're kind of up high flying around, and they swoop. They don't just go straight across like an eagle does or a crow. They're swooping and diving like that because what they're doing is that they're eating. They, they fly around with their mouths open. Maybe this is why they're called swallows. And they swallow up bugs that are flying around like gnats and mosquitoes. I really like that. Okay, was that the last one we had? Did I have? Another one, that one. Now this is another kind of swallow. This is his cousin. This is a barn swallow and it has that pretty orange on its head and underneath their tummies are orange. And they make their nests out of mud. A lot of times they'll make them under bridges or up in corners in barns or old buildings. Just stuck right on the side of the wall and they'll have a lot of babies in them. They have a lot, of, they lay a lot of eggs. They're not like doves, doves just have two. Okay, so now let's listen to its sound. Um, usually when you hear them flying around, you hear a lot of them. This is, a lot of them are singing together because they like to live in colonies or groups. Can you hear it? The thing I always like about swallows is they, they just fly around and swallow the food that God gives them. They just open their mouths and it just flies right in. <laughs> All right. So next time you're out after dinner, and if you see a bunch of birds, and remember their tails are kind of pointy and they're forked, and their wings kind of are curved like that, those are swallows. Well, we can't listen to this whole thing. I think it goes on for an hour. So I'm gonna turn it off. So, Maybe tonight, if it's nice weather, you're looking around, you'll see some swallows out there. So this was fun. I'm glad we got to be together. I love doing this with you, and I love you. And I love seeing your pictures. If you get to post them, or sometimes your mom will send them to me, I think they're great. And I will see you soon. Bye.